Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. So I wanted to do a video um, after one month of using Speedify, testing it out on Ubuntu Linux for connection bonding and how that has actually worked out uh, as compared to using a load balancing router. Now I described a few videos this month how I went on a sort of crazed mission to uh, fix my home internet. So my home internet has been just consistently buggy for not only the past year since we moved into um, our current department, but all the time I've been in Israel using DSL connectivity, it's been surprisingly bad. So um, I've just been looking for sort of ways to improve that until fiber optic connectivity comes and we can try to get really stable connectivity, which will hopefully be happening somewhat soon. But if you don't have that, if you live somewhere rural, if you live somewhere like me, where you're just your local ISPs are for whatever reason, just not providing very consistent internet connectivity and you work from home and you really, really need good internet that you can count on. So these are two options. One of them is uh, channel bonding and one of them is load balancing and failovers. Let me just kind of uh, pull up my diagram here. This will just explain, it's gonna look a little bit noisy and complicated, but I'm just gonna explain quickly the difference between these two setups. So what I did firstly here, one way to, to sort out this problem or to try to improve your home internet connectivity is to use by a load balancing router. Now you can find these described as VPN routers, uh, wired routers as, as opposed to wireless routers, SMB routers. Now the reason for this is because uh, these things are really used in the business environment typically or the enterprise environment, especially if you're running something like a data center. So in cloud computing and servers, load balancers are kind of essential infrastructures for distributing incoming connections. But um, you can also use them in a business environment and you can use them in your home if you have multiple WANs. WANs being wide area networks, so multiple connections. So you could have Starlink and cellular, or you could have ISP and cellular, or you could have two cellular and one ISP, or you could have two ISPs, one fiber optic line, one coaxial line, one DSL line. There's, there, there's no rules here. You just need to have an, uh, some kind of a hardware device with enough WAN ports uh, to support the incoming connections. Now, what the load balancer does then is, the way I have mine set up is, as you can see in the diagram, I have my uh, ISP router coming into the load balancer and I also bought a cellular router from TP-Link and I have that coming in there too, along with the data sim, uh, data sim plan that I purchased. So uh, this was always here on my network and these are the two additions, the load balancer, the TP-Link, and there's also a Wi-Fi router on the end of it. Um, but the, the crucial piece of this gear is the load balancer uh, here in the middle. I'm just gonna give it a bit of color to highlight it. So uh, what this guy does basically, it'll take in those connections and you can do a few kind of interesting things. One is just failover, that's the most basic thing. Now failover means that if the uh, ISP line is good, then we're gonna use the ISP line, that's gonna be primary. But if we have a failover event, super, super low tech, this is off, then it's going to flip over to cellular. And the way it does this is the load balancer is gonna be pinging at an IP address. You can configure these in my TP-Link uh, load balancing router. You can do single or dual detection. Single detection just does an IP, dual detection pings an IP and the DNS. Uh, and if that is, if, this ping fails, well, okay, so the ISP line's down, so let's go over to cellular, and then we're gonna keep pinging anyway, and when the pings return that this is back, boom, we're gonna go back, and we're gonna put this guy into hibernation again. So it works nicely, but where I find that it works, this works well if you have a long failover event. So let's say the your ISP line goes down for a few hours. Now this actually used to happen where we were quite a bit when there was like roadworks going on. I have no idea what happened, I can only assume someone was like chopping into a cable uh, periodically, but we had a few of those style events and this is great for that kind of a setup, right? It fails over, that does take a little bit of time because um, for your, whatever you're doing, you're browsing the internet, it takes a little bit of time for your uh, applications to detect, oh, there's a, we're, we're going through a different route to the internet. So I've timed that at typically about 20 to 30 seconds but it works and 
to an extent, it's a set it and forget it solution. You just run your, your um, ISP router, this guy here, you really wanna set this up ideally as a bridge. A bridge means it's gonna basically just be used as a modem, so to bring in the DSL connectivity. Ditto for the, uh, for the cellular. You wanna have these both as bridges ideally. Um, you can play around with the DHCP server and IP ranges, but if they have a bridge setting, it'll simplify life. So uh, that's, your, that's your goal get them into this and then this is effectively the router and uh, if you have something like a access point here which is what I have on my network uh, TP lane this is my network basically I think it's like the Archer 6 as a P okay so that's coming um, that's actually connected to the load balancer just put it like here and then there's a switch and everything that's after the load balancer is going to be getting the uh, enhanced connectivity for want of a better word, uh, which means that you know when one goes down, the second goes, second comes up, whether you're using wired internet, whether you're using wireless internet, everything's gonna have, everything that comes off the load balancer is going to have that, let's call it backup internet automatically built in. You don't need to do anything to your wireless or to your internet. They're just gonna flip over because the load balancer does all this moving for you. So that's one. Now, as I said, this worked really well when there was interruptions that lasted for like an hour. Where it failed, to be honest, was when there was interruptions when, I don't know how to describe these, I'm gonna call these jaggedy internet events. Ja jaggedy internet events meaning that when it's the weekend and suddenly everybody's home from the office and everybody's watching Netflix at the same time. Now your internet's not down, but it's just kind of, it's very, very weak and it's kind of coming in and then dropping off. I don't know if where you live, you get internet like this, but this is kind of how it is for us a lot of weekends or when there's a public holidays here. So when that was the connectivity situation, I find the load balancer didn't work nearly as well because the load balancer was confused. There was the internet on the primary line was up. So it wasn't gonna do the failover yet because there was a connection, but on the TP-Link, the options for backup and failover detection are not that advanced. There's no, um, maybe on the uh, Mickey Talk and Ubiquity devices, there's more options and OpenWRT. In TP-Link, I don't wanna use the word primitive, but it's uh, basically a ping test. There's no way to say, you know, this is supposed to be a 50 megabit per second line. If we get down to below five, it's not down, but it's as good as down. So can you please bring up the second line? So that, to the best of my knowledge, isn't built into the failover detection. Um, you can also do load balancing on a load balancing router naturally. So you can use it for sending, uh, configuring different LAN devices to use a different WAN. Uh, binding applications to so there's there are more things that you can do than fade over but I found that when we had those intermittent connectivity internet days this was not working particularly well um, I was still getting more downtime than I would like having invested so much time and effort in this amazing internet system so what I started doing was I said okay let's give Speedify a second chance now what I'm doing with Speedify is seeing as I already have these two routers and place my home network, I decided I'm gonna just give these a go again on my computer bonding them. So uh, I picked up a, um, a Ethernet to USB adapter, stuck that into the computer, created, ran another wire from the cellular router into the computer. There's already one coming um, off the Ethernet. Um, so now I've got, instead of doing the load balancing like the rest of the network, I'm bringing them both into my computer and I'm running Speedify on the computer and I'm actually bonding the uh, connections there. Now bonding is, again, there's more, there's more than meets the eye with bonding. It's not just about, great, I have two connections or three connections, let's just like match them together and like speed everything up. Not that easy, you have to have hardware on the WAN outside of your local network that's going to take your pipe, split apart the packets and route them off to the different connection sources. So. Uh, that's what Speedify basically does and that's why my diagram, I stuck a cloud there. So those are really the two configurations you can do in your network. Here are my observations. I like very much the idea 
of uh, buying your hardware. Set it and forget it. Invest in a good load balancer you're happy with. Invest in a router for, uh, for everything. Run it all into that load balancer. Wire everything after the load balancer and you're good. I love the simplicity of it. You do it once. However, two advantages for Speedify. And I say this with absolutely no commercial affiliation to Speedify. I've just been using and testing them on a Linux computer. That's my only relationship to Speedify. The failover events on Speedify were much, much better. They were much quicker. Speedover on the TP-Link was about 20 seconds when I was using Google Chrome because as I said, it needs to figure out a different way to the internet. Now, maybe that's an application layer delay and not a network level delay. Using Speedify, those failovers, they, they have a thing in their app called seamless failovers as a feature. And it really was, it actually was a seamless failover. When I, you know, simulated a failover pulling out the, uh, pulling out the Ethernet cable from the cellular, it was seamless. There was no, there, there wasn't even a second. It just, the connection continued. So um, those are just two, and I'm sure there are many other ways. There is, I didn't talk about Open MPTC because I haven't tried it myself yet. That's definitely something I'd love to attempt. Running Speedify on a router would be cute as well. It supports Ubuntu and it supports Raspberry Pi, but it will not, at the time I'm recording this, run on top of, um, I believe, other Linux distros. I don't know if there are Fedora. There, there are, of course there are Fedora. There's Red Hat servers. Um, I think it's just Ubuntu. I don't even know if it run on Debian server, but don't hold me to that. Check their website and Raspberry OS. So if you can get your own hardware put a Ubuntu server on it and you've got enough Ethernet ports to wire everything up, it'll, you can run Speedify on the router level. Otherwise, it's a device level program. And that's one thing I don't like about it. I would prefer not to save money because I get enough licenses to have everything. Just prefer for simplicity to be running it on a router uh, like the load balancer does. And then I know that everything connecting through it is going to be getting that better connectivity. So that would be my preference. But... Uh, next project. Hope this video is useful. Uh, two ways to improve your home internet. Two, let's say, more advanced ways. Uh, typically, stuff like connection bonding has been big amongst, believe it or not, um, broadcasters and nowadays internet streamers. Because if you're if you're broadcasting from a place and you need cellular, you want to have you want to make sure that you don't lose packets when you're broadcasting. So they've been using it for a while. Uh, Teradek do cellular bonding solutions. And it's becoming more popular. And as a work from home, home-based business user, not able to get what I need from the conventional residential home internet solutions, uh, both these sort of setups have uh, really improved my internet. And I'm at the point where I'm just kind of like making the last tweaks just to get it really there to that 100% level of sort of uptime, stability, robustness, uh, that I'm looking for. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to get more videos about home networking, connectivity, backup, failover, all these topics, please feel free to subscribe. There will be more of them coming out.